We think that the laws of physics as we experience them are set in the very earliest stages of the universe. And quantum fluctuations in everything would be responsible for another universe having slightly different laws of physics than ours. Because the quantum fluctuations will take it in a slightly different law of physics direction than our universe. And this would just keep going. Every universe that's born, even if it started out sort of the same in the very first instant, a later instant when other laws of physics manifest, could be slightly different. And with the multiverse, where there could be pockets of the universe that are expanding with no knowledge of any other pockets of the universe. These are essentially independent universes from one another, and never the twain will meet. Imagine you're a ship at sea and you look to the horizon, and that's your whole universe there, to the horizon. There's another ship that has its own horizon, and you declare, this is the universe, and these ships don't even see each other. You'll only see each other if somehow you, your two horizons can overlap. And we don't know how to do that in our universe because they're non-causal. You'd have to find some way to tunnel from one universe to the other in order to access that. But that could be very dangerous because if the laws of physics are different than the ones you evolved on, then you could just dissolve into a pile of goo because the charge on the electron is different and all of your biochemistry would change. The multiverse theory proposes the existence of multiple universes beyond our observable universe. And when you put them all together, they encompass everything that exists. All of space, time, matter, energy, information, and the physical laws that describe how things work. Although among scientists, there's a bit of a debate about these multiverse ideas, some of the big names in physics can't quite agree on whether other universes really exist beyond our own. For some, the multiverse is a no-go zone for scientific investigation. They worry that trying to explore the multiverse without solid experiments might make people lose faith in science and harm our study of the fundamental laws of the universe. In fact, some folks argue that the multiverse is more of a philosophical concept than a scientific hypothesis because there's no way to prove it with experiments. For example, the cosmic microwave background radiation is a crucial piece of evidence supporting the Big Bang Theory and our understanding of the early universe. It consists of faint microwave radiation that permeates the universe, and it provides a snapshot of the universe's state when it was very young, around 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This radiation is incredibly uniform, but scientists have detected tiny fluctuations in its temperature across the sky. One theory is the notion that these temperature fluctuations could be the result of a collision or interaction between our universe and another parallel universe or bubble within the multiverse. While it's an intriguing idea, it falls within the realm of speculative cosmology and is not a well-established scientific theory. So you can imagine other universes that are not our universe. There could be universes way cooler than ours. Universes where they formed life way faster than ours did. We didn't have enough ingredients to make life until we can make a planet. Every time a star blows up and it has these heavy elements, it's not enough the first round. You got to accumulate them. And we're like second or third generation supernova here in our solar system. Only then you get enough to have oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, silicon, iron. We got enough. We got a solid planet. Our solar system formed about 4.5 billion years ago from a dense cloud of interstellar gas and dust. The cloud collapsed, possibly due to the shockwave of a supernova close by, which contained a mixture of elements, primarily hydrogen and helium, which are the most abundant elements in the universe due to their prevalence in the aftermath of the Big Bang. However, these clouds are not just composed of the lightest elements, they also contain traces of heavier elements, such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, silicon, iron, and many others. These cosmic building blocks not only paved the way for the formation of planets and the establishment of our solar system, but also contributed to the creation of the ingredients necessary for life as we know it. From the organic molecules that made up the DNA in our cells, to the compounds that drive the chemistry of life on Earth. These elements are the essential components that support the fabric of the cosmos and our place within it. We are the product of the mixtures of ingredients that are in this universe. So if you rank the elements in your body, the number one element is hydrogen contained in the water molecule because we're mostly water, as you may remember from biology. The next most common atom is oxygen from the water molecule. Third most is carbon. Fourth most is nitrogen. 
Well, wait a minute. Those are the top four ingredients in the universe itself. In order. Not including helium, which is chemically inert. You couldn't use it anyway. So it's the top four chemically active ingredients in the universe. We're made of that. Is there some other universe that has a different mixture of other ingredients and they opportunistically made stuff out of those other ingredients? You know, you need some chemical activity in it. Carbon is highly reactive with other elements, so that's good. It's not an accident that we're carbon-based. We think other life elsewhere in the universe would be carbon-based because carbon is plentiful and it bonds in so many different ways. If you're experimenting with the diversity of life, carbon is your element to do that on. So this urge to say, let's see if you have silicon-based life. You Sure, because silicon sits right below carbon on the periodic table. It makes all the same kinds of molecules. So for me, what's curious to me is the assertion that if we have a multiverse and there's an infinite number of universes, that means there's an infinite combinations of all things that had ever happened ever. If the multiverse is infinite, then there would be an infinite number of universes with different properties and histories. This means that every possible outcome and event that could have occurred, no matter how unlikely, has occurred in at least one of these universes. Events that we consider extremely rare or unique in our universe, such as the emergence of intelligent life, the occurrence of specific historical events, or the formation of unusual cosmic structures, would not be rare at all in the multiverse. In fact, they would occur countless times in different forms across different universes. If every possible choice and outcome is realized in different universes, then every decision you make or could have made has already been made in some alternate reality. You can imagine that there are countless versions of you, each living a slightly or dramatically different life. If all versions of ourselves exist simultaneously, what does it mean to be you? What happens when two versions of you have different memories and experiences? Are they still considered the same consciousness? Or do they become distinct entities? The multiverse theory invites philosophy exploration of the nature of identity and consciousness. It prompts us to re-examine traditional assumptions and consider alternative perspectives on these fundamental aspects of human existence. It raises questions about consciousness and whether our awareness can transcend beyond our universe. You make tiny changes in what is and say, that's happening in one other universe somewhere. And people are wondering, does this give you immortality? If you exist in this other universe, is that really you? If your entire molecular structure is identical, is that really you? I think people are overstepping there. I don't think it's really you. It's a copy of you, but it's not you. And my evidence for that is, if you're a twin, you don't wake up as your twin ever, even though you are molecularly identical to each other from birth. You don't share each other's conscience. So one of you is an exact replica of the other, except you're not the same human beings. So I can make an exact replica of you somewhere else, but I don't think you'll know or care or feel it. So this talk of I will live forever, even when you upload your consciousness, do I, we don't understand consciousness enough to know what makes you, you and me, me. Why do I wake up as me every day and not as you or as anybody else? That's consciousness. Can that be duplicated and put somewhere else and that still be you? Or are you just making a twin who has a whole other independent consciousness? That's what keeps me up at night. If you enjoyed this video, please show your support by liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.